We're now going to be looking at Chapter 10, Communication from the CIE ICT IGCC course. We're going to be looking at 10.1, Communicate with other ICT users using email, and 10.2, Effective use of the internet. Okay, so the first slide is Communicate with others, other ICT users using um, email. So email is a very popular form of communication between people. However, many countries have laws to protect people from the misuse of emails. Below are some laws which companies and individuals have to follow when using email. So the first law is ensuring emails do not have false or misleading subject lines. Organizations must include valid postal addresses. Organizations are not allowed to capture and store lists of email addresses. Organizations must ensure privacy policy are clear and that subscribers are made aware of such policies. There should be a clear way for recipients to opt out of um, receiving email. So let's say you've subscribed and you want to opt out, it should be very clear and very obvious. Organizations are required to ask for permission to opt in before they can send emails to individuals. So basically if you want to um, subscribe for a newsletter, it should be a clear option to tick or not to tick if you want to receive the letters or not to receive the letters. Okay, so acceptable language. So when sending an email, the language and content within the email needs to be appropriate. If the email is being sent to an employee with in a business, then the language should be formal. So examples of using inappropriate language would be abusive, racist or threatening language or sharing obscene images or illegal content. So what is netiquette? Um, this is basically the rules of etiquette that apply when communicating over commu computer networks, especially the internet. So let's have a look at the first option or the first rule of netiquette. Senders should consider what they write as the content in the email could be misunderstood or taken out of context. Senders should check for spelling and gram grammatical errors. They should respond quickly to an email and message. Do not put everything into capital letters because if you put something into capital letters it looks like you're shouting in an email. Do not plagiarize and obey the copyright law. And avoid humor as some people may not understand the joke. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. The content of an email can be protected by copyright law. If the sender of an email states the message is confidential, then it's important the email is not forwarded onto the third party. So it also could be a case of attachments being downloaded and also passed on. So if an email is protected by copyright law, you can't send the contents of that email to another person, including the attachments. So it could be, for example, a personal document like a contract. Sometimes organizations will send an email with the copyright statement at the bottom of the email. If your email account is not secure, then emails could be sent from your account without your permission or knowledge. So your email account could be hacked due to the following reasons. Having a weak password, so someone could guess your password and log on to your account. Leaving your computer on and walking out of the room whilst being logged on to your email. So this has happened on numerous occasions where, for example, in a classroom, the teachers walked out. Someone has sat onto the teacher's computer and sent an inappropriate email to the head teacher from the teacher's account. And another problem is using your email on a shared computer with multiple users. Now, sometimes the email client might remember your password, so as soon as you log on to Gmail, you've automatically logged in. So if there's multiple users on that computer, then this is not a good idea to save the password. Um, also, some people may stay logged in, um, and then if another user is using an e um, email, same client they can access your email so it's really important that you're not saving your passwords if you're sharing a computer with multiple people also um, you are signing out if you have multiple people using the same computer you could also be at risk due to email scams like phishing and farming your email inbox could be also jammed up by spam email so what is spam email we have covered this in the early chapter chapter 8 so spam email is um, basically a junk email which is sent out to recipients from, from a mailing list. The email could be part of a phishing scam or could be to promote certain products. They are basically unwanted emails. The effects of spam email, if a spam email, or if a spam email is part of a phishing scam then there's a chance your details could be obtained. The network could also become slower or unresponsive if there's a lot of unnecessary traffic flooding the network. Okay, so strategies to prevent spam email. So you can use a junk email filter to stop spam email coming into your inbox. Um, some email clients provide this option automatically. 
Do not sign up for any commercial mailing lists. Do not reply to spam email. Untick the checkbox if you are asked to give your email to a third party. So email groups are contacts which are grouped together so that emails can be sent to multiple recipients. So let's say for example I want to send an email to all the members of my department. I can create a group called ICT Teachers. If I type in to the address bar ICT Teachers then automatically all the names will appear. Um, all the recipients will automatically appear who are part of that group. So when sending an email to a group you just have to type, write the name of the group rather than writing everyone's email addresses separately. So the effective use of the internet. The internet is a worldwide collection of networks. So you can browse the internet, you can social network and communicate, online shopping, online banking and you can transfer files from one computer to another computer. So the internet allows you to do many things also including uh, video streaming, net, uh, Netflix. So the internet has many purposes. Now the World Wide Web is part of the internet this can be accessed using a web browser consists of a massive collection of web pages so this is just basically accessing content through the web browser now the internet is defined as a computer network based on internet technology normally accessible by internal members of the com company via a username and password so as a private network information is specific to the needs of the company so schools could have the internet if they want to share specific content with their students so the students would have to log in with a username and password and they could access course content or access maybe the grades. There's less chance of external threats such as hacking and viruses from spreading. So the internet will be uh, moderated um, by the company to ensure the information on the internet is more valid is more and more relevant. Okay, so we're still looking at the effective use of the internet. Hypertext Transfer Protocol, so HTTP and HTTPS. So it's basically the rules which are followed when transferring information across the internet. Rules are agreed between the sender and the recipient when the data is being transferred. So when you see HTTPS, it's a secure socket layer. So it's a secure connection, so all data will be encrypted. This is especially important if you are entering personal information like usernames and passwords. You don't want to type in a username and password if you see only HTTP. This means the network or the website is not secure. When you see S at the end, it's a secure socket layer. All data will be encrypted. So what is URL? Uniform Resource Locator. So URL um, or the web browser allows the user directly to display a web page. A browser will use URLs to access specific as or specified websites. So URLs are used to go to a specific web page. URLs are represented by numbers, as you can see here. However, it's not very user friendly, so therefore an alphanumeric format is used. So for example, my website would be http colon double slash uk. I'm missing a C for some reason, I'm not sure why. So HTTP or HTTPS are protocols, so basically rules which we follow when transferring data across the internet. So what, how is a URL made up? So basically you have the protocol at the start. So in this case it's going to be HTTP. Then the web address. So www.yacma.co.uk. So I've got the C here. I'm not sure why it's missing here. And then you've got the path and then the file name. So this is where the folder in which the um, page might be stored. So the folder is pages. And this is the actual page I want to refer to. So chapter18.html. Okay, so what is FTP, so File Transfer Protocol? FTP is a network protocol when transferring files from one computer to another computer. FileZilla is a popular FTP application which is used to upload web pages so that they can be hosted and viewed on the internet. Internet Service Provider or ISP, Internet Service Provider uh, provides internet access to users. Normally the user would have to pay a monthly fee. Broadband connections tend to use fiber optic cables for increased bandwidth. The internet service provider would also provide users with a router which allows them to connect to the internet. Okay, so let's look at cloud. Cloud is an online storage medium used to back up files. Files can be accessed from any device with an internet connection. Data is saved on more than one server, so in case of maintenance or repair, data is always accessible. 
So cloud is an online storage. Okay, so what's the advantage of using cloud um, storage? Files can be accessed from any location using internet connection. So you can be accessed um, on your mobile phone, on your tablets, on your laptops. Users don't have to carry storage devices around with them. Um, it provides backup solutions. So let's say you lose your phone, your content, your images will still be available on a cloud, which still can be accessed from different devices. And you can have unlimited storage capacity. Um, the disadvantage of having cloud um, storage is files could be hacked. Recently, celebrities have had their personal pictures hacked and shared with newspapers and magazines. Um, it's dependent on a good internet um, connection. So if you don't have a good internet connection, you won't be able to upload um, content to your cloud, to download or upload files. And also the potential cost of using a cloud storage could be um, additional um, costs compared to when using a USB or a hard drive to back up your data. Right, so let's go to the next slide. So using search engines. So when using the internet, you can either type in a URL address or use a search engine to find specific data. Normally keywords would have to be typed into a search engine to find particular information. The more detail a search will result in more relevant and accurate matches. So you can also click on an on advanced search. So in many search engines you have the option to have an advanced search. Um, you can put some words in speech marks or you can include minus or plus signs as well if you want to find specific data or maybe sometimes you can include or if you want to find uh, different types of information. Okay, so let's look at so blogs and blogging. So a blog is based on personal experiences and usually updated by one author. Blog entries are in order, so most recent entries are shown first. Blogs cannot be changed by the users by other users of the internet. And um, bloggers can be prosecuted for posting offensive material in certain countries. So if they're posting something political in certain countries, then they could be arrested. A wiki, an example is Wikipedia. So a wiki is a collaboration for many users many authors to create content. So wikis can be edited by anyone, content can be edited or deleted. So Wikipedia is an example use of wikis. Um, the negative use of or the negative or the disadvantage of Wikipedia is, is because as many authors able to edit the content, the content may not be trustworthy. Um, social networks. So social networking sites allow users to interact and communicate with each other. You can connect with people with similar interests. Users are able to share content such as photos, videos, and status updates. And businesses and companies can also use social networks to reach out to their um, potential customer base, um, share information, share information related into um, up and coming sales, for example. Okay, so let's look at the effective use of the internet, using the internet, the advantage of using the internet, and also let's look at the disadvantage. So the advantage of using the internet is the data is updated all the time, in real time. Um, there's a vast amount of data available on the internet. can find information using search engines. It's available on many platforms, so your mobile phones, your tablets, your computers. Um, web content can include text, images, videos, sound, animations, etc. So the disadvantage of using the internet is not regulated. There's online threats including hacking, viruses, scams, cyberbullying. You could easily become distracted, um, sharing of illegal content, the exposure to inappropriate material, especially if you're a young person, and the information may not be reliable as you have multiple um, people uploading websites and it's not necessarily going to be trustworthy. So the internet has also evolved over the years with the introduc introduction of social networks, media streaming sites, online shopping and online banking. So we're looking at now why the internet is so popular. So the internet is very accessible now over various platforms, even across different countries, um, relatively cheap to use and sometimes free to use. Increase in bandwidth allows faster browsing and download speeds. So why an internet search to find relevant information is not always fast. So due to the amount of information available on the internet, it's difficult to find specific information quickly search engines will not necessarily post a website in order of usefulness so you may have to look through different websites to find your information why is it not always easy to find reliable information on the internet content on the internet is not regulated anybody can make a website and can post any content which is not factually correct wikis can be edited and can contain false information 
information may also be biased depending on who was writing or, or who was the author. How to evaluate the reliability of information found on the internet. So check in the website URL address, so ending in .gov or .ac is going to be more likely to be reliable. So .gov would be a government website, .ac would be an educational website. So you can also check the links or endorsements from other websites. So if the website has been endorsed, uh, you can check the last time the website was updated. Okay. Also, if the website was recommended by a teacher or someone you would trust, then it would be more suitable to use. So we've now come to the end of chapter 10. Thank you for your time. Please show your support to the channel. Please subscribe below and leave your comments. Thank you again.